Hello and welcome back to another Floor and the Novs Explorers video. Today we're going to answer our most frequently asked question, which is, is our self-build conversion a failure or a success? So what did we do right, what went wrong, and what would we change now that we've been living in this 11 by 5 foot space for the past five months? When we built this, we had no real world experience, no real DIY knowledge, and it was based on what we thought we needed and the limited research that we did. So we had a few points to bear in mind when we were planning and building the van, which were... Keep it simple, we wanted it to be spacious and also have plenty of storage. We wanted it easy to achieve, practical, rustic and with a bit of our own personality and flair in it. So keeping that in mind, there is definitely a few things I think we overlooked. Our first thing that we overlooked drastically was ventilation, and that's at the top of the list for today. Our main source of ventilation is probably the front windows. Yes. And all we've got there is the little wind deflectors, which allow you to drop the windows by an inch or two and stop rain getting in. We overlook this drastically because the amount that we breathe and the amount that is created through cooking has been collecting on the windows. Yeah, we don't have an oven in the van, it's only gas, so we do a lot of boiling and obviously the gas itself gives off quite a damp Wet heat, heat. Yeah. which isn't ideal. I mean, most of the time it's not too bad. Obviously, weather like this, we could open the doors, it's perfect. However, it's not always quite this nice. Yeah, in the winter, it was a pain in the butt because we have to open the back door as well to get a bit more draft through and it also gets far too hot. So to alleviate this, we could have put um, a fan in the roof. I think we might have considered it, but for one, we didn't want to cut holes in the van ourselves. And I just don't, th I just don't think we realized how much just being in this space, how much breathing and cooking creates. Yeah. Obviously it can lead to other problems with it condensating. If you don't dry it, then it will turn to mold eventually. So you've got to keep an eye on it. And it's just something very simple that we overlooked. So second on the list is not having installed a split charge relay and I'm going to take full responsibility for this one as electrics were my department and I was extremely naive. Now we've got two leisure batteries inside the van and they are charged by the solar panel on the roof which was doing a cracking job when we started our trip way back in the summer. It's producing enough power to charge our laptops, phones and lights without really thinking about it. However, as we progressed into the trip, the daylight hours reduced, giving us less possibility of making power. However, thankfully, this has been sorted thanks to Meg's dad, who came and paid us a visit and fitted one rather professionally into the van, and it works an absolute treat. So that means whilst we're driving the vehicle and the alternator's charging the main battery, it's also putting charge into the leisure batteries too, so we don't have to think so much about the solar. So with us being novices and wanting to make things as simple as possible, we thought the best option for gas on the road is camping gas. I'm sure you've heard of camping gas before. It's readily available across Europe. It's sort of like the Calor um, equivalent, basically. So we thought that'd be nice and easy because we just buy a bottle, screw it in, we've got gas, happy days. However, a bottle of this size will last us about three weeks, maybe a little bit more, and it generally costs us something in the region of 20 to 35 euros. It would have made much more sense to have refillable LPG tanks installed somewhere either within or underneath the van. But like I said, we thought this was the easiest and safest option, however, it's definitely not the cheapest. If you don't want to dabble with gas yourself, then we'd say go with the camping gas, but with our next conversion van, whatever it may be, we'll go with refillable LPG as we're horrified at how much we are spending on the gas compared to what we could have been with refillable LPG. Another simple thing that we overlooked was adding extra insulation to the cab. We didn't, we regret it, because now we have little drips every now and again, because again, connected to the ventilation issue, this is the area where it seems to collect and condensate. So insulate that, probably should have soundproofed it too, but it's a little too late now. We wish we had more natural light in the van and one window we don't think is enough. Initially, we hadn't planned to put any windows in the back of the van at all. However, we wanted to change the V5C document from a panel van over to a motor caravan and the DVLA stated that you needed at least, at least back then, one window in the living space of your vehicle. It's two now. It is. I think when we started doing the van, we were under the assumption that we'd have to be mega stealthy. Um, 
if we were going to go camping in these wild spots we'd have to be uh, sort of under the radar and not too obvious. However, having been on the road for five months now, it really isn't an issue at all. No, I think we'd struggle putting windows into Flora now because of all the, the layout and where the furniture is, yeah. but something to consider for you guys at home if you're planning or potentially for us for our next one. It is great for security though, having one window, especially this dark tint, it's really hard to see through if the van's all locked up, so that's been really good, but obviously it limits the amount of light that comes in. We're currently in two minds about the roof box. The five months we've been on the road, we've opened it a grand total of one time, and that was to get our chairs out, and now they've stayed inside the van. That is because the placement of the roof box and how we get into it is not ideal. The placement is entirely down to our choice. It's not great, but it's the best we can do with the solar panel and the surfboards on the roof. So it is our fault. I'm not blaming the manufacturers at all for that. If we were stationary, there's a higher chance that we'd use it a lot more often. There are some cool things up in there like our barbecue and wetsuits. However, with being on the move all the time, we don't really get those stuff out very often. We've also got these straps that go across the top, so that's an extra step needed to open it. And it's just quite a lot of faff. So we think it's important to point out now that all the stuff we use on a regular basis is inside the living space of the van. It's easy to reach. That's something to consider if you're planning your own adventure, but you'll soon learn what's the most important and least important items. So we're five months into our adventure and we've only used it once. You've got to wonder if that space would be better used for say another solar panel. So as we mentioned in the past, we actually really do like the swivel seat and table design. We think it works really well, especially considering we did it initially just to pass the uh, DVLA's requirements once again, and it stows away. We think it works really well. However, one that's freestanding or sinks into the floor would probably be a better option because once the table's in position, I'm quite stuck. I feel like a baby in his high chair and I have to keep asking Meg to do jobs for me because I'm quite literally stuck in this little area and it doesn't always work that well. The hidden beauty of the table is that you get weighted on hand and foot. Uh, Meg, would you mind passing the diary? Sorry, the table's up, I can't get past, thank you. Have you got a pen? Sorry, I um, can't get through the table. Cheers. Can I have a drink? I would, yeah, I'd come and get it, but I can't the table. Thank you. I'm gonna get ready for bed in a bit. Can I have my um, pajamas? I'd... Another annoyance to mention is our tap. As much as we wouldn't change it for the world or do anything differently, we have to put a towel underneath to stop it from dripping when we're driving, which is annoying, but again, it's not the end of the world. I don't think we put a sink in Flora just because I don't think there's enough usable space and you can't stand to wash anyway, so the tea towel will have to stay. We're really happy with the storage that we've put into Flora, but we reckon these doors could do with a remodel. They're a bit cumbersome. Ideally, I think we'd put in a little concertina there so it would fold back on itself, just because it's awkward in getting stuff in and out. And it's just, ugh. Sometimes you can't do it. Another small thing that I think we would add in hindsight is some more hooks, a bit like these, but on the doors, because we need a bit more height to hang our coats and towels and things like that when they're wet. One thing that we'll be doing shortly, or when we get back to the UK, whenever we find the materials really, is putting a bit of rope to keep all these in. Most of the time, they stay in place, but there's every now and again where it's been a rough road or an unexpected speed bump, they fall out. Most of the time, they're all wedged in quite nicely, but not always. Oh yeah, and a few things we could have probably looked out for is aircon, a six-speed gearbox, cruise control, and most of all, a better radio. The one that we've got in Flora is the factory fit one. It's NAF, and we prefer using our DAB radio. We only have one CD in our collection, and that is Lewis Capaldi. Shout out to your brother, and we know all of the words. Your grace, your grace, your grace, don't take it away. <laughs> That'll do.
really? I've got goose pimples all over. <laughs> really? <laughs> Why? I don't know. Jesus. <laughs> At least I'm not crying. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be that off key. So overall, we are pretty happy, impressed, and somewhat surprised with our overall build, layout, and space that we've created. Nothing that we made ourselves is actually broken, apart from the table leg fell off one evening when we were getting ready for dinner. Just boop, popped right off, but nothing that a few new screws couldn't fix. The upholstery and the woodwork is still looking good too. We do take a bit of extra care with the upholstery, but we're not over the top with it. However, we have bashed and dinged the woodwork numerous times and it still looks like it did when we first did it so yeah it's quite easy to clean and keep on top of and if anything stains the wood we could always sand it back down when we got home yeah. for us flora is the perfect compromise for having a small enough vehicle to get about park in normal car parks and even get off the beaten track into wild spots versus comfort and space on this journey, our eyes have really been opened as to what's possible when living and traveling in a vehicle. We've had quite a few discussions and we're coming up with some plans and idea about what we're gonna do in the future. And we'll definitely be discussing that on this channel. So please subscribe down below if you'd like to see what our next move is, but that'll be in a little while. Yeah, video coming shortly on that one. So if you've liked what you've seen today, give us a like, a subscribe, and feel free to comment anything that you'd like to say below. And don't forget to press the bell button down below to get notified each time we upload a video to the channel. If you're new to the channel and you want to see how we created Flora, head over to our dedicated self-build playlist. But if you're more of a reader, we do have a blog as well. That'll be linked down below with our social media links too. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. See, see you in the, the next, next one. one. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Right, we need to crack on because that sun ain't going to last forever. <laughs>